Model steam engines and boilers part 18. Some problems with a model boiler fitting and how to make your own. This is a compilation video and it contains some really useful information. I make these compilation videos when I'm very busy with my other job, the recording studio. And in January 2022, apart from being busy in the studio, I'm also doing my accounts. This compilation video is very interesting. As I was editing this compilation video, I realised just how much information was contained within. I'd forgotten some of the details that I'd put into these videos, which are extracts from two series. The first video shows a very unusual problem with the check valve or clack valve. This is a Stuart Models clack valve and I don't know how old it is, but it seems okay. And the good news is, the top cap comes off. Sometimes they do not. If you look closely at this clack valve, and I'll pause the video so you can see it clearly, you will notice that it has three aluminium washers fitted, one where it goes into the boiler, one to the top cap that I've just removed, and one is also fitted to the small blanking plug at the front of the clack. More about this later. For now, it's time to have a look at the internal contents of the clack valve. And what's this? A rusty ball valve? This is most unusual. Definitely not a Stuart part. In the bottom right of the picture is the top cap that I've removed. And you will notice that the unthreaded centre part is longer than it needs to be. It's designed like that to limit the ball travel. As an educated guess, I would think that someone has removed this top cap in the past and lost the ball, then replaced the ball with a standard ball bearing that was larger than the original stainless steel ball, hence the extra washer on the top cap, to allow the ball to lift off the seat, but now it's completely rusty and useless. And there's a lot of rust contamination inside the clack valve body. So what I'm doing here, I'm using a piece of wood and some of this abrasive compound to clean out the inside part of the valve body. And why am I using a piece of wood? A piece of metal may damage the valve seat. And using this abrasive compound, I've also cleaned up the outside of the valve too. But there's still a way to go before it becomes as polished as I want it to be. You will notice in this picture that there is a stainless steel ball next to the rusty one on the bench. I'll be fitting this shortly. But before I do any fitting, I'm cleaning up the part using some cellulose thinners. Time to think about reassembly. First question, do I fit the aluminium washer? Uh, no. If I do need to fit a washer, and I may not need to fit a washer to this part, I would use a copper one like this, far better, and no cathodic corrosion. Cathodic corrosion is when two dissimilar metals are in contact with each other, and over time, one of the metals will start to corrode, and this is very badly corroded, it's just falling to bits. So in my opinion, the fitting of aluminium washers is not a good idea. They do take considerable time before they corrode away, but then they cause problems for the other part of the fitting. I could not successfully remove this small inspection blanking plug. It was damaged. Why is there a blanking plug here? Well, frequently, the bottom end of the water gauge will get blocked up as it goes through into the boiler, usually with lime scale or similar debris. And the idea is you remove the blanking plug and push something through to clear the blockage. I have a better idea. Why not fit a drain cock instead? It seems to me to be a good idea because you can just open the drain cock and push a very thin piece of wire through the hole to clear the blockage. In this clip, I'm fitting the drain cock using some Loctite 542. But as I'm fitting it, I'm realising that the drain cock's thread is too long. It's a very simple fix though. I removed the drain cock, ground some of the thread away on the one inch belt sander and refitted it with some more Loctite 542. Before fitting the top cap, it is most important to seat the ball. And to do this, you put the ball in the valve and use a piece of brass rod, hold it perfectly vertical and hit it with a hammer once. And this makes sure that the ball is firmly seated over the hole in the bottom of the valve. It's a good idea though, after hitting that ball with a hammer, to fit a new ball into the valve, just in case the heavy hammer blow has distorted the shape of the one you use to seat the valve. In this clip, I'm permanently fitting the top cap in place, and now it's time to test it. The drain cock works okay, and by pressing the ball from underneath, it does this.
At this stage, I'm using a centre drill to drill a hole down the centre of the piece of bar. And then, after centre drilling it like this, I use a twist drill to enlarge the hole. And I'm using a twist drill which is tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. And as a general rule, I always use two imperial drill sizes down as tapping size drills for ME type threads. And if you don't know what they are, ME stands for Model Engineering. There are certain thread forms that are generally used in model engineering applications and they got christened ME a long time ago. I started off the threading operation by hand, but to speed up the job I engaged back gear in the lathe to slow it down and did the rest under power. Back gear is now disengaged and I'm parting off the component. The material that I'm using to make this fitting is called leaded phosphor bronze and it's really easy to machine. The darker red stuff is horrible to machine, try and avoid that. A quick health and safety warning. While the lathe is still revolving, I'm using a ruler to mark a line on the work a quarter of an inch in. This is a terrible idea. I'm not saying you should do it this way, this is how I did it, but I don't recommend it. It's best to stop the lathe and then measure the distance and mark it with a felt tip pen. Measure twice and cut once. I've stopped the lathe and I'm just checking that the distance that I'm cutting is a quarter of an inch, and it is. And in this next clip I'm stopping the lathe a lot because I'm using a micrometer. I would never use a micrometer on anything that is revolving. That really is just asking for trouble. And also over time it would wear the micrometer. I put in these health and safety notices and most of the time they are common sense but it's best to just be reminded now and again. This clip shows the end of the bar turned to 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. Now I need to centre drill the part, but I have to be careful. I need to leave enough material around the edge of the centre hole to allow the thread to be cut on it. I'm not using a tailstock die holder for this, I'm using a standard die holder, but I'm using the tailstock chuck to make sure that the die is square to the work. And here's the finished 3 8 by 32 threads per inch thread, and when I screw a union nut on it, it's perfect. I didn't bother showing the threading of the other end because the process is absolutely identical to what you've just seen. I have a kit of parts. Now I need to machine the end of the part of this fitting that's going to hold the water tap, and for this I'm using my rotary table that I bought recently. It's mounted on its side and I'm rotating it so that the open jaws are at the top. That's so that the chuck does not collide with the jaws. And while on the subject of chucks, yes I know I should be using a milling chuck, but I use this one because it never drops cutters. When I looked in my box of assorted end mills, I didn't have one that was half an inch in diameter. But I found a metric one that was nearly half an inch, but I had to move it from side to side a bit. All will be well once it's silver soldered, and talking about silver soldering, here we go. As usual, I'm applying far too much silver solder. Old habits die hard. After the silver soldering, I left the part until it had cooled to black, and then I quenched it in some water to remove some of the scale. It's fairly important to drill the hole down through the centre of the top of this fitting into the main union and by doing that, water will come out of the tap when it's opened. Normally, I would have put this part in the acid bath, but to speed it up, I'm just cleaning it up using my Proxon motor tool fitted with a flapper wheel. And it's a good idea, really, in this case, because I'm going to paint this part, so also the flapper wheel is keying the part for the paint. The water fitting is going to be used in the installation I've been working on recently. This is a 12 inch south of pump, connected to my Castle Steam V6 boiler, and the idea of this fitting is so I can run the pump without pumping water into the boiler. Sort of like a steam powered water feature, and here it is in action. That's it for this video, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.